Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So this is an Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray RS. It's a 2021 version in this glorious powder blue, and it's kind of insane. For the number of guitars that come through the apartment for the channel, I've never actually tried a proper USA Ernie Ball Music Man. I've heard so many good things about USA Ernie Ball Music Man guitars, but for whatever reason, just haven't had the opportunity to try one myself yet. I've tried Sterling's before with mixed results. The affordable CT50 Roasted Maple was amazing. The much pricier Majesty X, not so much. So I wasn't really sure what to expect out of this bona fide American-made Ernie Ball Music Man. Spoiler alert, I get it now. I get why they're so hyped up on the internet. The neck is incredible. They've made a new fan out of me. Let's take a closer look. All right, so real quick before we get into it, Ernie Ball haven't sponsored this video, but they did send this guitar over for us to check out together, so just wanted to get that disclosure out of the way. They haven't told me what to say. They didn't really say anything about this guitar, really. They just sent it over. And I told them I'd only make the video if I loved the guitar, and, uh, well, here's the video, so, yeah. So let's hop into a demo track, hear how it sounds in the context of a full produced mix, and then I'll meet you back here with some final thoughts and tell you why I love this guitar. Let's do it. And before we get into the main review portion, I want to give a massive shout out to Dion Lorenzo and the rest of the amazing patrons that support the channel and make these videos possible. All the Patreon pledges go to Luke for the mixes or to Jordan Video Editor, so it's really, really appreciated. If you want to support the channel as well, get bonus stuff like MP3s and tabs to all the demo tracks, link to the Patreon community is in the cards. And with that out the way, let's get into the review. <laughs> So I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. I totally understand the hype now. As someone who's a total Les Paul fanatic, I certainly wasn't expecting to absolutely fall in love with a guitar like this, but pretty much straight from the beginning, it was like, holy shit. Starting with the neck, because for me, that's the make or break feature as to whether a guitar gets to stay or whether it gets to go to a new home. This is a keeper. The neck is incredible. Not only the color and the figuring, the bird's eye maple has a slight flame to it, 
and it's had all the moisture roasted out for stability and it's got this beautiful dark brown shade. And I'm not just talking about the shape either, it's got like an asymmetrical C where the base side is chunkier and the treble side is slimmer. But it's the way that it's treated, it's not any sort of gloss or even a satin finish, it's a custom blend of wax and gunstock oil. It feels very natural and so slick. Like the neck just conforms to your hand and the guitar becomes an extension of your being, as dramatic as that may sound. The other thing I'm super impressed by is the fretwork. These aren't super massive frets, they're medium sized, they're perfectly crowned and polished flush with the rounded fingerboard edges. The guitar itself is pretty light, it's about maybe seven and a half pounds, and it's a well-balanced instrument too. This thing is just a dream to play. And that quality extends to the rest of the guitar. The neck has a nice tight fit in the pocket, no fit and finish issues whatsoever. You know, because I cover a lot of more affordable guitars on the channel, when guitars like this get featured, uh, a lot of people have questions. Besides the name on the headstock, what are you actually paying for with a guitar at this level? It's the quality. You're paying for the time it takes someone or a team of people to meticulously go over all the details and make sure it's as good as it can be before it's shipped off to the dealer. Like, look at how nicely the rosewood fingerboard is blended through fine sanding onto the roasted maple neck at the fingerboard. It's perfection. Of course, you also get high-end features like Schaller locking tuners, which are awesome, and I'm not sure how much of a difference the Ernie Ball compensated nut actually makes, but it seems to do its job, so that's cool. I'm not even gonna lie to you though, the powder blue color is amazing. Especially combined with the tortoiseshell pick guard and the tortoiseshell back control plates. I mean, it's so retro visually. And then the little chrome control cavity cover, it reminds me of the Fender 66, which had a shrunken jazz bass body. Like the way it just adds a little more durable metal to the front in an off-use area, it's so classy. <laughs> Back to the neck though, I did notice all the stock photos of EBMMs have this like incredible flame. Uh, even going to the front of the headstock, I thought that was a signature Ernie Ball thing. Mine's not really like that, but the way I figure, it still looks great, and roasted bird's eye is rare anyways. Honestly, I wish it had a roasted maple fingerboard instead of rosewood. I think that would have fit the guitar better visually, but also, I've never been into rosewood, so I'm kind of biased on that. For 2021, the Stingray RS also comes in burnt amber that does have a roasted maple fingerboard, so there are options. As far as sound goes, I'm not sure what's in here, honestly. I would guess El Nico 5 humbuckers, but it kind of doesn't even matter. They sound good for chugs and for cleans. <laughs> I was kind of surprised there isn't any way to split the pickups, no push pull pots, no mini toggles. Given the Stingray is such a forward thinking instrument and splitting the pickups is such a standard feature on modern guitars, it's one of those convenience features that would have been nice to have. Love single coil clean sounds, but the pickups sound great in this guitar already. So it's not something I'll spend too much time complaining about because truth be told, didn't really miss not having a split option too much while I was playing it. I have to say something about this pickup selector. Quality wise, no issues, and I love the position on the upper horn. Again, normally a less ball player, but it's one of those little stubby ones that doesn't have a lot of travel. I don't know, it just felt weird and it stuck out because I loved the rest of the guitar. <laughs> Remember, Leo Fender was the president of Music Man after his non-compete with CBS expired. So to me, what this Stingray feels like is classic guitar design meets just the right level of modern innovations. Right, like it's got stainless steel frets, but they're not extra jumbo like you'd find on an LTD. They're high medium like you'd find on a Fender. It's got a very curvy, traditional style body, 25 and a half inch scale length, bolt-on construction. It kind of looks like those guitars that were designed in the 60s, especially with the color 
but instead of the traditional four bolts with a big blocky joint, five bolts with a more sculpted joint. The bridge at its core is a two-point trem, but it's a Music Man modern tremolo design with vintage bent steel saddles. So you kind of understand what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get at here. You don't have lumen lays, there's no Fishman Fluence, there's no Evertune Bridge, which are the current designer specs of choice for ultra modern metal guitars. This is more like they've made the guitar that companies would have made in the 1960s if they had the technology to do stainless steel frets, to do roasted maple. And I've been saying for a long time, it kind of sucks that for new guitars offered in 2021, most fall into either one of two camps, either recreations or reiterations of the same guitars we've had since the 1950s and 1960s, or super modern and metal focused. It's like all the cool innovations get used on metal guitars and that's it. This meanwhile, it falls somewhere in between. It's like the bolt-on I've been searching for. It's the Goldilocks guitar between modern and vintage. It's just the right combination of both. I mean, this is a guitar with stainless steel frets and a roasted maple neck with a 10-inch fingerboard radius. That just doesn't happen. So, yeah, sorry I've been sleeping on this brand. Every one of you that's been saying that I need to check out an Ernie Ball Music Man, uh, yeah. You were right. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. Let me know what your thoughts are, because of course, these are just my opinions. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications. That way you don't miss any new uploads from me. Thanks to Ernie Ball for sending this guitar out for us to check out together. That's really cool. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.